Hey, hey pals, welcome to my YouTube channel and my backyard. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Paige Miller and you are welcome here. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so depending on how you found your way to my channel, you might know me as Paige the Framer, not Paige the Farmer. Um, because my actual job is a picture framer. I am a framer, not a farmer. But I'm also an avid knitter and fiber artist. And because of that, a lot of people will see Paige the Framer and switch the R and the A and read Farmer. And so for years, I have met a lot of people from the interwebs in person and they just laugh we all laugh about the mix-up and how so many people expect me to be a farmer with sheep or however over the years i've really fallen in love with gardening and working in my backyard and it's a joke with a lot of the fiber artists out there um, that i'm turning into page the farmer so i thought i would start a Page the Farmer YouTube channel to document some of the things I do here in my in my backyard. So this video that you clicked into today is kind of a vlog style what I've been up to this entire summer. So today is August 30th 2022 and summer is coming rapidly to a close uh, and I took some video throughout the summer starting in May uh, so there's just some snippets here and there that I thought I'd share with you and give you a feel for what I'm all about so I hope you enjoy my channel oh pals a farming dream came true this summer my friend Anne hosted me and a bunch of other makers on her farm for the New Jersey fiber shed barn crawl and I sold my baby tomatoes do you remember back in the spring i started i don't know well over a hundred tomato seedlings and every one of them germinated <laughs> here they are and i sold some of them and this was the view from breakfast what okay mars why don't you narrate for us what's happening so what's happening here is makers are fastidious <laughs> and when presented with a problem add bodies and brains and when that doesn't work we just add sheer will <laughs> and tape and tape and tape get in there so uh stay tuned to see if this ever turns into a ball of yarn that is knittable <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> don't you give up on that piece of yarn that's just fuzz. That's just yeah, fuzz. Mars, right. how do you feel? I just haven't experienced anything like this in my life. It's <laughs> it's freeing. It's it's Forget a nourishing experience children. to win. <laughs> when it's you against say? the fiber and you Can you, the you other find one? triumph. Yeah, that's it. There's yeah. nothing like it. <laughs> after working so hard at, at something, after achieving the goal. Yeah. True teamwork, really. Teamwork. Yeah. yeah. We Couldn't have done it alone. Are the yeah. champions, <laughs> yeah. my friend. <laughs> yeah, Whatever this is. <laughs> and we'll keep on fighting till the end. <laughs> you guys are totally going on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> if this is what I get famous Whatever for, I will never we're gonna go forgive viral. you guys. <laughs> it's it's the same. It will just roll. Oh, hang on, Pete. Hang on, Pete. Okay. Whatever okay. your name is. Okay. <laughs> you're like our grandma. You're saying all of our names in a row until you get to the right, right one. That was my grandma. <laughs> I was talking okay. about. All right. Hold Turn. Turn. Yeah, and I say for whoever ends up knitting this, I would do a now three you gotta show how many people are involved in the game. All right. How many yeah. fiber oh, yeah, folks does it wide. take to get yarn off the spindle? Yeah, and I don't have to wind it until the answer is five. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Chuck right there, we're going to be taking a ride. He's going to have a new home. I'm going to make sure where I put him, there's lots of clover because that's his favorite food. So he'll have clover. Okay, bye Chuck. Okay then. 
You're off to your new home, little guy. Okay, since releasing Chuck into the wild, about five miles away from my house, a couple things. One, I read online afterwards and spoke with a professional. And both sources say that releasing groundhogs in the wild is less humane than outright killing them. For so many reasons. Google it if you want to know all the reasons. I'm not an expert at groundhog release, <laughs> catch and release. <laughs> um, so think about that before you catch and release a groundhog. Also, I live in New Jersey and it's technically not legal. Well, not technically, it just isn't legal. Also, the professional that I spoke with, I will call him next time, but see my shed? That's where Chuck was living underneath that mess, that beautiful mess right there. Uh, about three weeks later, someone else moved in. So yeah, I think for now on, I'm just going to try to figure out how to live with all the chucks. Okay, carry on. Pals, Paul Miller and I are performing chicken surgery today. Buffy has Bumblefoot, which is a staph infection that she got in her foot from a cut. It's super common in chickens, like, well, two feet. Only Buffy. Um, it's pretty common, in, actually, it's really common in chickens. All right, guys, this is Buff. It's hard to see your feet, but. Let me look and see if you're someone here. Yeah, you so, um, right there. It, see that right there? That is a scab. So that's her little bumble foot. And she's got a small one in this foot too. So we're gonna put her in an Epsom bath. And soak her little foot. Right, you got a towel ready? Yeah. Let me take this. Don't let go of it. Okay. So now we let her soak for like 15 minutes, right? You wanna hold this? I'm gonna turn the camera off. That was surprisingly better than I expected. Do you agree with that statement? I do. <laughs> okay, I'm setting up the operating table. <laughs> and we have an audience. All the chickens alcohol? are watching. Oh yeah, can you guys see them? Look at Danny, he's up on the perch, like what is happening? All right, paper towels, because we don't know what we need. Alcohol. We've got cotton rounds, we've got gauze, and we've got cotton swabs. And then we have tape for her little foot, hydrogen peroxide, iodine, and neosporin. Glove up. Glove up. <laughs> Buff has been in her bin soaking in her Epsom salt spa for 15 minutes. Okay? Did you mention to everyone this is our first time doing this? Oh yeah, this is the first time we're doing it. So we're flying by, not by the seat of our pants. We read lots of blogs and lots of watched the videos. Ah. Oh. Buff, you want to say hello to your, your fans? Woo! Maybe not. Okay, ready? Yep. Put your hand under. Right, let's get rid of the bin. <laughs> okay. Now we got to wrap it. Can you hold her so I can go on the other side of the table? Yep. Because you're going to work on this side? Sure. Okay. I mean, you? you're going to be the doctor. I'll be the, I'll be the assistant. Yeah. I'll so, be the nurse. Is that what's going on? Yeah. Okay. I need glasses there. I don't know. Buff is like, I don't know what's happening here, but. All right, so this was her first foot. It's pretty clean. We still have to dig out some of that scab right there. And then this foot is the bad foot. So this one right here is pretty concerning if you ask me. I don't know how to get it to focus better. Um, and then this one we didn't even know about until we started cleaning her little foot. So she has like extra flesh down here and I'm wondering if that's why she's Well, like, it's because it's all swollen. Yeah, that's true. It's all swollen. Um, none of our other chickens have issues. So I don't know why Buff is having this issue. I'm not showing you 
all of the details of us working on Buffy's feet for a couple reasons. One, I'm not sure if YouTube will allow us to show something so graphic. Uh, two, it was graphic, so I didn't want anyone to feel squeamish. And three, I was making all kinds of like, ooh, ah, ooh, noises. And you know, Buffy wasn't the happiest chicken in America having this done, so I saved you the gory details. It was very good. We, Buffy was fine, which you will see after I stop talking to you. Blue, blue, you're so loud. I wanted to be able to show you. Do you want to be on camera? This is Blue. She's my loud chicken. She always wants the attention. You wanted to be on camera. Now you want to get down? Okay, back to Buffy. Um, so we did lose Buffy for a few reasons. Uh, she was on the mend and I really wanted to be able to show you her healed foot. She was doing much better. I had changed the bandage once uh, after what you what the what Miller and I did and they were healing great in fact the one foot that wasn't as bad I didn't have to rebandage but that doesn't mean that she still didn't have infection in her body and so even though she was healing kind of timing was bad we had an insane heat wave here in New Jersey I mean like days and days straight of a hundred degree weather I don't even know what that is in Celsius, like 30 something, like it was so hot for days on end. Buffy succumbed to a heat stroke. So I feel so sad. I feel sad sharing that with you. We have five girls now and just wanted to share that, let you know, give you an update on sweet little Buff. So onward. I feel like that looks better. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are we done? I think we're done. We're going to try to over. You want to get the camera? Oh, should we show them her feet up close before we do it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Hope, I hope I bandaged it, okay? Hungry chicken's a happy chicken. Wow, it's a live chicken. <laughs> right. <laughs> How's it feel, Buff? She's like, don't come near me, man. I don't know what you did to me. Ow, finger. All right, so. Ow. <laughs> All right, so what do we have to do next after this? What happens? Uh, Got to keep checking. I mean, fortunately, that's a good color because you can see if it's on their feet or not. Right. And then we just got to keep an eye on it. Check it again in a few days. And then re-bandage it. And just, re yeah, clean it and bandage. All right, then. Where is she? There's our little chicken, our brave little chicken. We should take her out for ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Morning time, pals. I'm gonna harvest the rest of my potato today. I'm really excited about the potatoes. I'm sorry, I'm talking quiet. I'm outside really early and I don't want to be too loud. Um, <clears throat> I'm super excited about my pota potatoes, <laughs> not tomatoes, potatoes. Um, I pulled out one plant, which was right, right there, right? Oh my gosh, you can see the space. <laughs> um, I pulled that out last week and we got about two pounds of potatoes. Um, these were store-bought grocery store spuds that started to sprout and so I figured let's just try it. They were fingerling potatoes, so I'm assuming I'm going to get the same potatoes. I have no idea what I'm going to get. 
um, but I'm pulling these out because I'm so excited about the potatoes and how easy they were to grow that I ordered seed potatoes from, I'm not, I can't remember where, I'll put it down here once I remember. Um, and they will be coming by the end of the week, so I want to get them into the ground. Okay, let's dig. Pulled five plants, but that one right there was a dud. I'm super excited. Look at my taters. <laughs> okay, so the takeaways from this batch of potatoes. So, like I said, these were from the grocery store. They were a little tiny bag of fingerling potatoes that I forgot about, <laughs> and they had sprouted eyes. I mean, what are they called? Stolons? And they were pretty big, so um, they were organic, and I think that's why. Um, because last year, I had a potato that sprouted that I don't think was organic, and I grew it in a pot, and I didn't, the results were like, mm, I don't even know if we ate them. So these are, these were organic. Now what I find interesting is these are all red potatoes. When I put them in the ground, they were several different kinds. So that to me says, Sorry, the sun's coming up over my shed. <laughs> that to me says that these guys are hybrids. Um, so that's interesting. Okay, what else? Um, I didn't get as much as I think I could have if I had let those potatoes sit in the ground longer because these were hybrid fingerlings. I don't know what they were supposed to grow into, right? Were they supposed to grow into baseball size? I have no idea. So I wanted to get them out of the ground because I actually ordered seed potatoes from wherever I told you guys. <laughs> uh, and I know what I'm going to get with those. So I'm excited to plant those because with those we'll get big, you know, regular sized potatoes. And I think we'll get pounds. <laughs> So these will be eaten. I'm not going to bother. I mean, I'll put them in the basement and let them dry, but I'm not going to try to store them because they'll be gone probably by the end of summer. I mean, that's right there. Each one of those piles could be a potato salad or some home fries. <laughs> I'm going to Lake George very soon. So we'll be bringing those with us for breakfast and for salad. So what did I learn? Well, I just told you a few of those things. Um, I learned that growing potatoes is crazy easy and it's so fun and rewarding <laughs> to dig them up. So I think you guys, if, no matter where you are, you could live in an apartment as long as you have some access to direct sun and water, you could grow these in a pot for sure. Um, I wouldn't bother trying grocery store potatoes if they are not organic. Like I said, the experiment that I did last year did not, <laughs> it did not produce any fruit or the fruit that it did was, didn't look good to me. But also I have heard through reading and videos that um, store-bought potatoes, I realized this after I did this, um, 
could potentially introduce disease into your yard that normally wouldn't be there. So, right, take that with a grain of salt. Um, so I think that's it. I'm going to sift through the soil one more time to make sure I got all the taters and I'm really excited. <laughs> Grow some stuff, friends. Just throw it in the ground or in a pot and see what happens. my shoes. Oh, they're outside. <laughs> Look at the humidity. You want to come outside with me? Come on. Come on. Come on, baby. Good morning, friends. Or, good morning pals. Mm -hmm. Oh, it rained last night. I got water in my flip-flops. My garden crocs stay outside overnight because they're usually filthy. Good morning. Do you want to come do some chores with me? Good morning, girls. Oh, I just spilled fermented chicken food on my dress. It's going to smell great. <laughs> Fermented chicken food. That's what's happening. Oh, there's a butterfly stuck in the chicken. Can you see him? Let me turn this around. Hello, pretty girl. She's stuck in there. Can you guys see her? Yeah, you can see her. She or he needs to be let loose. Oh, she's so beautiful. Let's see if I can get closer. Stuck in the chicken coop. I need to free her so chickens don't eat her. <laughs> Come on, little butterfly. Let's see if I can get you out. Come on, go up, go up. Oh, you're so close. Oh, you're so close. Come here. There you go. Free as a bird. Or as free as a butterfly. So I ferment my chicken's food. Not all of their food. Okay? This is just a little bit. And Amy, for some reason, never has patience and always jumps up and has to get a couple bites in before her sisters. Uh, this is just good for their gut health. Like fermented food is good for us. It's good for chickens too. So this is their treat. And it's been so hot here that it's just nice that they're getting more moisture, more water. Cam, okay, you want to take a bite? Are you going to jump down? Nope. Okay. So I'm going to do my chicken chores. And then I was thinking before I head out, today's Saturday, it's my Saturday off. Jamie's at the shop and I get to not go to work today. <laughs> so I'm going to spend a lot of time in the yard, but I'm meeting a friend for breakfast at eight. So I thought I'd come out and pick some veggies for her and I'd bring you guys with me. I haven't done a video in the garden in I think months at this point. So there's a lot. There's a lot to see. So let me get some chicken chores and then we'll start a little bit of a mini garden tour. Where are 
are you? What's going on with you? Are you so jealous that I'm in here with the girls and you're not? <laughs> he loves hanging out with his girls. Like, he actually likes the chickens. It's so strange. All right, so let me, where do I, well, I'm in the chicken yard, so I'll turn around and show you my wall of, this is the wall of <laughs> squash. Do I have squash? No, no squash. This is the wall of cucumbers, melons, and beans. Um, I'll turn it back around so we can get a closer look. Some baby cukes. Powdery mildew is present because it's summertime in New Jersey. And it's not possible not to have it. But this wall really does have great airflow, so it's not super bad. I go through every day and clip out some of the some of the leaves, but I haven't had to do too much. So let's see, what do we got down here? Got some melons growing. Little baby melons back here. Um, all up here are beans, which I don't see any bean pods yet. Uh, no, I don't see any bean pods yet. Which is so weird. It's crazy to me how the garden changes from year to year. Like what you had, what you did last year won't necessarily be what happens this year and just why I think I'm a gardener not a farmer even though I like to pretend okay right there we've got a cucumber it's a crystal apple cucumber what else do I have in here more crystal apple cucumbers right here is a melon I think this is a kiku melon I planted so many melons and so many beans on this wall and I labeled them with blue tape and Sharpie marker thinking that would do it. And I'd be able to, there's another melon down there. Uh, I'd be able to identify what was growing where and the Sharpie marker's gone. Look at those beautiful beans growing. All those lovely blossoms. The bumbles are going nuts over here. So I have no idea what's growing where because there's a dragon egg cucumber, little baby Kajari melons growing. This is my sorry sack of a compost pile because of chickens. They destroy it. Um, but here is a white currant tomato. They get, I mean, they don't get much bigger than that, but they get bright yellow and super sweet. So this is... I forgot these kind of water, oh, lemon drop watermelons. They're small melons. I think I have about four of them. There's a few tucked in the back over there. Um, there's one there. There's a little cutie there. So this bed was where I had my garlic. So now it's melons. This will not be garlic again this year. I'm gonna put garlic in a raised bed. Uh, right here, I had planted some Potatoes. I'm kind of late with my potatoes right now, but I hear you. Ooh, someone's living there. That was not Doug. I wonder who's living under there. Bubba, who's under there? We've got some summer squash, a brand new one. I like to. Um, rip out old and put in new just to kind of battle <laughs> or not have to deal with all the powdery mildew. It's kind of the best way that I've discovered. And plus they grow so fast. Some pretty zinnias and some sunnies waking up with the sun. There's a whole bunch of sunnies back there. There's another melon. What else do we got? Oh, so I threw this bed in here this year. I had extra, I had to move a bunch of perennials and I didn't know where to put them. So, well, there you go. <laughs> and they're surviving. I planted an artichoke here 
and one there. So we'll see if I can keep them alive and produce some artichokes in the next couple years. This bed is just extra things, things that, like these were uh, astilbes that are on their way out that were in the shop bed. This bed doesn't get as much water. It's not on a, I don't have it on, like that's a soaker hose over here. This is Bud's catnip. So yeah, this bed is okay, but um, I put down some cardboard and that's gonna turn into another bed. Got my butterfly bushes and my fruit trees, my little friend. So over here, I planted some more potatoes. I, I think I was starting to say over there that um, that I planted my potatoes a little bit late. I should have had them in the ground like two weeks ago. So I'll have new potatoes. I won't have fully grown potatoes. So they won't, I probably, the difference between uh, the few weeks, maybe three weeks I should have had them in the ground is these just won't store as long. They might not store at all. So I'm gonna have to use them quicker. Um, again, more squash. I've got to pull out these glad these are kale that I still haven't fed to the chicken and they made it through all the, well, they made it. I would not eat them. That is chicken food. <clears throat> uh, oh, and then peppers. These are um, weary weary peppers, which is super hot peppers. I'm growing them for my friend Laura. They're really stunted because of our spring. Peppers, peppers can be kind of uh, temperamental. Uh, okay, so these are all herbs. I've got my oregano and my, my lavenders and my thyme. It's a really pretty little space. Um, I've got some weeding to do. I have some beans growing here as well. You see them? Uh, let me point here. The beans are right there. Um, I got through a tomato in there too. I had a bunch of cherry tomatoes that I didn't know what to do with because I didn't have any space so they got thrown into <laughs> they got thrown in anywhere I could find space for them this is some more beans I planted so many different varieties of beans that I can't even tell you what they are yet um, I did everywhere everything from like you know homestead green beans to um, adzuki beans which I grew last year I have all kinds of beans for drying kidney beans, black beans, cow peas. So I'm hoping they'll, let me tell you my issues over here. So learning, right? Always learning. This wall of cucumbers and melons um, and beans, they're sharing the space. And I don't think I should have done that. I should have separated them because I, they're just in too much competition for a high yield. So it's lovely to look at and I am getting beans and melons and cucumbers but uh, the melons and the cucumbers are really greedy and they're they're I think not making my um they're not they're not they're not playing well with the beans it's another melon oh, look at this cute little melon so yeah, um, but the other thing that I did in this bed that I wish I hadn't done was put my bell peppers over here. Now these poor peppers have had a pretty bad run of it. The spring was really long as in cold and and wet. Um, so they, they, they were stunted. And then I put them in this bed with cucumbers and beans. And so the competition for water is fierce over here. Um, I do have them on a drip, but the peppers aren't winning. I'm not gonna have very many peppers this year. So this is the white currant that I showed you from the other side. This is the front side of it. And these are what their little maters look like. And they're super yummy, <laughs> super yummy.
Okay, pals, if you're still here at the end of this video, thank you so much. I did not expect this video to be as long as it is, <gasps> which is good for me because I didn't think I took a lot of video throughout the summer, and clearly I did. So I probably could have broken up some of those videos into smaller videos, but for this first video, I figured we'll just cram the whole summer into one. <laughs> I will probably take another tour of the garden for you soon because a lot of my beds over there didn't even make it into this video. Uh, that bed has a lot of my tomatillos and tomatoes and ground cherries in it. So expect very shortly a video all about ground cherries. I've been obsessed with them this summer. Again, thank you for being here. Thanks for making it to the end. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll come back soon. Until next time, bye.